I'm Larry Menti. This week on Jersey Matters, concussions and football. How young is too young to play? Their brains are developing, so do I want to imp do I want to put them in harm's way where there may be an injury to their brain when it's developing? No, I don't. Foreclosures in New Jersey are still rising at an alarming rate. We'll tell you what you can do about it. Bankruptcy gets rid of the debt, but it doesn't transfer the ownership of the property. You have to get rid of, sell the property. And Miss New Jersey came oh so close. It was such a surreal experience. I mean, being called into that top 15. I should point out that we're taping this at that brand new stadium at Monmouth University. They have a game against Hampton this week. We'll be talking to the head coach of Monmouth University in just a minute. But first, a few words. A brand new study is out today from Boston University that finds that children who play tackle football under the age of 12 are twice more likely to develop a learning disability and three times more likely to develop depression later in life. It is a study that gives parents pause, including me. At the end of this show today, I've recorded a commentary on my wife and I's decision to allow our son to play tackle football at the age of 11. Again, that's coming up in about 45 minutes. But right now, our interview with the head coach of Monmouth University Football, Kevin Cowhan. Sir, thank you so much. I'm doing well. I appreciate you doing this. We're going to talk about the success you've had so far this year, uh, two and one. You came out gangbusters. I do want to touch on the concussions real fast, okay. if I may. Um, what is your opinion of youth playing tackle football? Well, I, I think, you know, I'm all for it. I think the more people you can get involved in football, the better. Uh, I think that, you know, the concussion, uh, that's something that uh, is across all levels of football, from the NFL all the way down to youth levels. And I think there's a, a number of things, that uh, safeguards that have to be in place to make sure that in the instance of a concussion that it's being treated properly and you're, you're taking the proper precautions in terms of teaching technique and, and how you're teaching people to block and how you're teaching them to tackle so that you can prevent it. You know, honestly, it's, it's my belief and it has been for a number of years that you've got to keep the head out of football. Um, I know that, you know, over in recent years they've made a big deal of targeting and hitting with the head and, and things like that, but this goes back 20 some years where we've never taught uh, the use of the head as a, as a weapon or use it as an aid in tackling or blocking in the sport of football. So I think it, it, there's a, a burden that falls on coaches to make sure that you're giving your players proper instruction so they understand the, the correct way to do things. And I think that will reduce the incidence of concussions. I think there's got to be proper safeguards in place in terms of your protocols when you do suspect a player of having concussions. And I think there's got to be an educational component. And you do we, all that here? We do all that here. How young is too young? Um, I, I think you want to get the, the body uh, developed enough so that they're not going to sustain uh, a serious injury to themselves. I think by the time you're eight, nine, ten years old, you're ready to start playing. Because I know you're not just a coach, you're a father. I am. And, and so you had to deal with this. I dealt with that. And when my son was growing up, um, you know, he was interested in playing youth football. And, and at the time, you know, we decided that it probably wasn't the best thing for him to do. Um, you know, he, he was small in stature. And here's the thing with youth football is everybody's the same weight. Somebody's got to be the offensive guard. And if that player doesn't grow up, he's only learned offensive guard skills. And so he's going to get to high school, and he's going to be 5'6", and he's going to be 160 pounds, and he's only learned how to play offensive guard. And, and I didn't want him to get pigeon, pigeonholed like that. So I wanted to make sure that he had a, a great experience across all sports. He played baseball. He played soccer. You know, he, he played flag football. When he got to high school, he started on his football team in a very good program, and he didn't miss a beat. So I, I don't think that he missed anything by not playing, but, but I'm not opposed to youth football. All right, now let's talk about your season. You okay. came out gangbusters, 2-0. And then you had the one oops last week right. against Albany. Uh, how do you feel about the season? Um, I think we're off to a great start. As you said, we won the first two. We won the inaugural game here at uh, Kessler Stadium. Uh, won the following week against a 19th ranked team from Lehigh. And then last week went up and played a, an excellent Albany team from the CAA. And it was a game that we knew we were going to have to play our best game to date in 2017. Um, and because they're a very, very good team. Um, we struggled a little bit on the offensive side of the ball. 
ball, had some opportunities to score, and which we didn't, and we didn't take advantage of those opportunities. And when you do that against a good team, it's hard to be successful. And you have a nice surprise this year, a guy that's getting a lot of press and was one of the leaders in the nation in rushing, Peter Guerrero. Tell me his story. Well, Pete's got a great story. He came to Monmouth a year ago, uh, and as a freshman, he only participated in track here. He came to me uh, probably mid-May and said he wanted an opportunity to play football, and, and we were all for it. He's incredibly fast, and you don't have to give him a very big crack in the line for him to get through. So uh, he's off to a great start, and we're really looking forward to see what he can do the rest of the year. So you have three more years with him? Three more years with him, yes, sir. So how? Uh, I, it's a difficult question to ask. How good can this guy get? Well, I think he can be very good. You know, the, the, the amazing thing is how quickly he picked up everything that a running back has to know. And it's, it's so much more than just handing him the ball and watching him run and say, go Pete, go. You know, there, there's a lot that he has to do in protections. We do a lot of checks on the line of scrimmage. There's a lot of alerts and audibles that he has to be in tune to. And he's very intelligent as a football player, has a high football IQ, and was able to pick up all of those things relatively quickly. I know football's a team sport. It's not all about right. one guy. He can't run unless there's a line that blocks for him. What should we look for with Monmouth University football this year? Well, I, I think you can look for us to have be dominant on offense. Uh, we have one of the best offensive lines I think that we've ever had here in 25 years. Uh, we've got a very talented back in Pete, and we also have some very explosive receivers. Uh, Reggie White, Lonnie Moore, and our quarterback Kenji Barhard does a good job of distributing the ball to all of them. And you know we weren't as good as we wanted to be last week, but I look forward to getting back on track this week. Well, I really appreciate you spending the time with Thank me you. today. Good luck. I, we're recording this before you play Hampton, okay. so I'm just going to assume you won. Well, well, <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Thanks a lot. Right. Co the head coach of Monmouth University football, Kevin Callahan. When we come back. Coming up on Jersey Matters, foreclosures in the state are sky high. We'll give you a plan of action next.